Hey everyone, Ben here and welcome to a race that has got absolutely everything, including drama, right up to the very last lap of the race. So don't go anywhere, settle in and let's get down to the grid for the race start. Okay then, we've qualified in P11 of a 22 car grid and we're getting ready then for the red lights to go out 20 minutes for Formula 4 action at Imola. And we are underway, but unbelievably the car ahead did not get away. And there's been a huge shunt in my rear view mirror because of that. I was just able to react in time and not pick up any contact or damage. So we got away with that. We're down into T1. There's a car off to the left hand side, right the way across my path. I had to take a wider line through the chicane in order to avoid getting collected on the inside apex there. Big drama already then. It's one of the trickiest T1 ones in sim racing I think at Imola we've managed to get through all right and in fact we've gained a couple of positions because of that and we can now focus on just settling down getting our car up to temperature and staying in touch with Emilio Padero up ahead who is currently half a second up the road and we've got half a second back to Benjamin Arndt just behind us as well as we get into the middle sector of this lap very tricky to just negotiate these cars through these corners high speed off camber and lots of undulations on this lap in Imola and when the tyres aren't up to temperature very easy to lose this car cautious driving up ahead has allowed me to close right in on Pradera here coming down into the heavy braking zone of the chicane here not really room for two cars to go through it looked like Benjamin Rawson up ahead locked his tyres he's going to be under pressure now then from Pradera as we keep a watching brief just half a second behind here and it looks as if we're going to be finishing lap one in ninth position here unless there's drama coming down into the final couple of corners here you've just basically got to coax the car through these two corners here in third gear try and carry as much momentum as you can onto the start finish straight and there goes the first lap then and you can see Pradera gonna make a move here on Rawson he's moved to the inside very early must have got a better exit from the final corner of the previous lap and look at that one car Max Alve slowing down it must be a slowdown penalty that he's trying to spend there always got damage in the meantime Pradera has managed to get down the inside of Rawson so he has picked up yet another position the classifications has us in ninth but we will actually be up in eighth position thanks to Alv losing time there on the straight we had to defend from Arndt down the straight there into the Villeneuve chicane as he was looking to make a move down my inside and once again he's got better momentum coming out of the last corner there we're gonna have to take the inside line through the hairpin you can see the radar lighting up red as Arndt was putting on pressure but I was able to hold him off we flash forward then onto lap three and things have settled down just a little bit but look up the road we've got one car off on the runoff area he's made a mistake through Agua Minerale that is Jonathan Ernst who was running up in second position in this race so that is another position gained I'll be up into seventh as we head into the very tight chicane one more time look off to the left hand side and that's Pradera despite making the move on Rawson just a couple of laps earlier he has looped his car and he is now going to drop down the field let's take a replay then of the start from Westgate's perspective you can see he's the man who clatters into Rotondaro and that then puts him into another driver Avalon was the guy who span heading into the first chicane that gave us another position he was very fortunate not to get collected by other cars here's Ernst accident out of second position off into the gravel but he will rejoin and we will see him later in this race Pradera though coming through the tight chicane just loses the back end a little bit keen on throttle and that is going to cost him big time in this race we rejoin the live action then on lap four and I am closing in on the rear wing of Benjamin Rawson. I'm running sixth, he's running fifth and you can see I've got loads of momentum heading down into the chicane but he covers off the inside line so I'm going to try and prioritise a better exit heading on down into the Villeneuve chicane to see if there's another move that we can pull there but already he's failing to the inside to be defensive. We've gained five positions then. I think there's another position in this for me. It looks like I've got more pace than Rawson up ahead but Benjamin Arndt is also closing in in my rear view mirror so I've got to be mindful of that too 
because I am now being held up by Warson up ahead. So I'm going to be losing time to Arn behind and Jonathan Ernst did rejoin and is in 8th position and we know he's got pace because he was running in 2nd place in this race. But for the time being I'm just focusing on putting as much pressure on Rawson as I possibly can to see if I can force a mistake. Very difficult to overtake in most corners on this lap but look at how much speed I was able to carry through Agua Minerale there. It's going to give me a run into the tight chicane here, into the heavy braking zone very very tricky to get two cars through here oh and I just think better than even trying to and I think it was the wise decision because I'm not sure Warson was going to afford me the space on the inside but that has cost me a huge amount of time to aren't behind he's now just a tenth of a second back as we go down the hill into the penultimate corner he's going to have a go down my inside I have to give him room on the apex but I'm just able to hold the position and he avoids running slap bang into my rear wing let's take a look at the replay then of me challenging Rawson into the chicane I'm not really all the way alongside but even if I was I think we would have had contact there I'm not sure he was going to afford me the space on the inside and then speaking of space on the inside Arndt tries to get down my inside through the final two corners of the lap but I was able to hold him off we rejoin then on lap six and once again I'm mounting an attack on Benjamin Rawson heading into the first chicane but unfortunately just not close enough. In my review mirror though Jonathan Ernst dives down the inside of Arndt. He's now up into seventh position as we are challenging once again Benjamin Rawson heading down to the Villeneuve chicane. He's squeezing me right out of space and I just have to let that move go because otherwise I would have been onto the grass or we would have had certain contact but once again that has slowed me down. Now I've got Jonathan Ernst around my outside into the hairpin here. He is going to get better drive off the corner as well. He is recovering, remember, from that earlier spin. And although I've got the inside line, he's got all the momentum heading up the hill. It looks like I might lose this position here. We're going to go too wide through the left-hander. Oh, and a big spin behind Benjamin Arndt is off into the gravel. We've lost that position to Ernst, so I'm going to be down into seventh position and now Ernst will surely set about attacking Benjamin Rawson so I need to just maintain distance here to the two cars ahead because I think Rawson is going to be under immediate pressure and you can see that as he weaves behind into the chicane and then there's contact there's contact and Rawson is around Ernst misjudging that on the exit of the chicane and that then is me back up into sixth position. Let's take a look at that replay then. As you can see, I was just not afforded the space on the outside of the track. And then that put me under pressure immediately. But Arndt was the man who ultimately cracked under the pressure of that close racing, losing the car and then rejoining. And then finally, there is Rawson getting tipped around into a spin from Ernst. So for the next few laps, we were basically losing time to earn stuff ahead. But then on the very final lap of the race, he would loop it through Agua Minerale once more. And that would actually see him disqualified from the race. He went over the incident point limit. And so from running in a very comfortable sixth position where we'd extended a six second gap back to seventh, we then got given fifth place on the very final lap of the race as I crossed the start finish line here I wasn't sure exactly where I'd finished in this race because I didn't see the accident in real time but here's confirmation of the classified results and you can see there Ernst disqualified from the race so a really strong showing from me here at Imola in fifth position now this race was characterized by lots of mistakes and if you want to try and minimize the mistakes you make in a race watch this next video on screen now